everyone, and welcome to the second episode of the 3D Daily Show, brought to you by Velo3D. My name is Madeline Pryor, and I'm a content specialist at 3D Natives. And if you've been following along, you'll know that yesterday we already talked to you about solutions at the show that are bringing us closer to digital industry for better production. And today, we will be looking closer at one key element of that production, which is, of course, materials. Looking at how they've been evolving, as well as what is driving that evolution. To do so, we will be talking to key actors in the industry to learn more, as well as introducing you to a new startup in the field. So follow along with us as we go through the halls of form next, and let's go meet our speakers. Hello. Hi, Madeleine. How are you? I'm great. And yourself? Yeah, great to see you again. It's wonderful to see you. Yeah. Second day, great day. Excellent. Well, could you please just introduce yourself as well as Elcom Silicones? So, I'm Carsten Schlichter. I'm the Global Business Development Manager for Additive Manufacturing at Elcom Silicones. So, what we are promoting here is silicones for additive manufacturing and primarily what we have is the extrusion range today. So, it's all. And for us, additive manufacturing is a journey for the future. I couldn't agree more. Could you please present to us your Amsil and Amsil Silbione ranges? The Amsil and Amsil Silbione ranges have been created especially for additive manufacturing. So they represent all the range, all the technologies that we are developing, have been developing, will be developing for the future in our range. And this is very important to have this branding out there for the specific parts. And out of that, we have a range where we have different technologies, different applications that we can do versus industrial versus healthcare applications out of those applications. And what exactly is the added value of Elkin materials? The added value we have is we are talking about silicons which are real elastomers. Silicon elastomers have prime characteristics that other rubbery like material don't have. So they are not thermosets, they are silicon elastomers. And you can see it when you have it here, it's real elastomer with long-term, long-lasting endurance of the mechanical performances, which are great today because we are all talking about not throwing away things, but not creating too much waste. So we want things to endure over time. And silicons are a great elastomeric material to do so. And that's why we want to use silicons as we do it in the traditional manufacturing, also in the additive manufacturing. So just to give an opportunity to the people to do what they have been doing with traditional modes, now with additive manufacturing. And of course we have to ask, what exactly are the compatible 3D printing processes? So today we have been developing a first technology line which is around extrusion processes what we call liquid deposition modeling. So in this process, we use such a kind of machine where you have the possibility today to use two types of silicons, support material, but you can also add on FDM, so plastic material to do composite materials for the future. So if we take, for instance, an example here, you see you have two grades of silicons. You have a soft grade and a hard grade. And that in a one 3D print go, something which has not been existing for the time being. And this, as you can see with this example here, it is adhering. And you have the real elastomeric properties of a silicon. And that is very, very important to do so. And also for the extrusion process, you have this kind of stretchy material. It's not a textile, it looks like a textile, but you can imagine applications in the healthcare industry out there or in the variable industries in, in that, so the taint. Or one thing about personalization for medical grades, for instance, here it is a mask for a pre born baby. So personalization to increase the chance for the baby to live and get have no casualties at all afterwards. And final question, could you please just tell us how you see the future of silicone in AM? I see still a bright future because we are just at the starting of the journey. So this is just the first set of technologies out of the extrusion range. And this is something which is important because it shows Alcom's commitment for the future 
what we want to do to the, uh, to the planet in terms of additive manufacturing, which is important for us. Uh, we have a climate program out there, the roadmap, and out of that, 3D printing is really one of the keystones for the future. Well, that was our final question, something to look forward to. Thank you so much for being with us here today. Thank you very much, Madeleine, and see you next year for the things we still have in the drawers, the innovations we'll have in the future. It's still not over. It will be, again, a long journey. But hopefully talking to you next year. Well, we're certainly looking forward to it. Thank you again, and have a great day. Thank you. Bye. Bye. We've already mentioned, but today's topic is materials. But what exactly do we know about the topic? Well, it's no secret that polymers are still to this day the biggest sector of the materials market in additive manufacturing. But the metal uh, materials, especially powders, are quickly gaining ground. In fact, according to Formnex, this year there are 274 exhibitors with material solutions. Out of those, no surprise, 169 are dedicated to polymers. However, just behind we have metal providers at 155. Also, for the first time this year, there were 55 exhibitors offering ceramic solutions at Formnext. Hello. Hi, hello, how are you doing? I'm great, and yourself? Also fine, yeah, it's a great show here today, yeah. We're loving it. Well, thank you so much for being here with us. Uh, for the first question, could you just introduce yourself as well as Levos? Yeah, of course. My name is Stefan Schulze. I'm heading the 3D printing materials department of uh, Lefos. Um, Lefos is a company actually producing materials mainly for injection molding. But a couple of years back, we started to, to get actually also materials for, for 3D printing. I can see how your experience would be a benefit there. So that, of course, brings me to my next question, which is what exactly are the solutions that you are offering in AM? So our materials are not actually materials for demonstrators or prototyping. Our materials are made for part production, for serious printing of parts which have to survive the same like the injection molding parts. I mean, impressive, really. And I've also seen that you do custom materials. What is the benefit of these for the manufacturing industry? So custom materials actually mean that, that we are able to customize the material uh, exactly to the, the, the application's needs. And very often we have customers um, where, where this only customer is, is the only one for, for a certain grade. So where we've specifically developed a grade for a specific application in terms of UV resistance or, uh, or uh, protection against wear and fatigue and, and whatever. So we, we optimize uh, or we are able to optimize uh, materials for individual applications and we can do so as well in 3D printing. So to offer exactly what is needed in the in their uh, respective application. That's fantastic. And actually, you recently have come out with some new innovations, uh, including actually this material here. Could you tell us a little bit more about it? Of course. Actually, our main topic this year is uh, flame retardancy, which is, a, which is a big topic in all public transportation. So when you're producing uh, trains, buses, or even airplanes, flame retardancy is a big topic. So the materials we provided this year, or we've, we introduced this year, uh, for example, here the, the poly, polyethylene amide, it's, it's, a, it's a PEI filament, which, um, and this is actually a grid which is used in a train as a spare part, and, um, and we have the same material available as, um, as, a, as a powder for the SLS process, laser sintering, uh, sintering process, and, and this has the same flame retardancy, so can be used in all um, public transportation uh, applications. Yeah, and it's very important on the way to become actually more professional. Excellent. Well, that was our last question. So once again, thank you so much for being here with us today. Oh, thank you so much for, for stopping by here and um, enjoy the show. Uh, you as well. Have a great day.
as we mentioned earlier, as well as the established companies in the AM, every Daily Show episode, we also want to start to talk with one of the startups in the startup area to get to know about who is coming up on the scene in AM. Today, we have with us Alpha Powders, which is a Polish company and which actually is one of the winners of the Formnext 2022 Startup Challenge. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you, it's my pleasure. Could we start with just, could you introduce yourself as well as Alpha Powders and what the idea is behind your company? My name is Dominique Zdebao and I'm CEO and co-founder of Alpha Powders. This is a deep tech startup, which main goal is to improve the quality of polymer powders produced by cheap manufacturing methods. Well, that brings me to my next question, which is, could you tell us a little bit more about your, how your Sphero Nano technology works? A Sphero Nano is the smallest of its family. We want to offer pilots and production uh, scale um, spherodization systems in the future, but we start from benchtop uh, lab scale devices. And what exactly are your target sectors for Alpha Powder? So our clients are powder manufacturers, 3D printer manufacturers and recycling companies. Why recycling? Well, uh, we discovered that you can upcycle waste, polymer dust generated in different processes, which is kind of cool and very new. You can use this waste, dusty material, fit it into our system and to create products flowable enough so it will be uh, possible to use it in 3D printing sector. And actually that's a perfect lead into the final question, which is, where do you see Alpha Powders in the next five years? Well, uh, we believe Alpha Powder systems will become a part of integrated manufacturing processes and uh, Alpha Powder sterilization will become something critical uh, for certification of polymer sector. Well, once again, thank you so much for being here with us today. My pleasure. And have a great rest of the show. And with that, we are at the end of our second daily show. And actually, as you can see, I'm in front of one of the largest machines at Formnext 2022, which is a great intro into our next topic tomorrow, scale additive manufacturing. Be sure to tune in to learn about everything from the smallest to the biggest machines that we see at Formnext 2022. Have a great day.